Okay, this is a video for those of you who aren't doing the tilt table but need to do the alternative project. Now, uh, if you are already doing an alternative project interfacing an OLED display, which I think at least two students said they were going to do that, that's fine. You're welcome to do that. And uh, that'll be acceptable. If you just get an interface and get it working even a little bit, I'll, I'll be happy with that. Because um, that, that's a little bit challenging, I, for sure. Um, for anybody else who's not doing the tilt table, uh, then uh, I think this is what I would like you to do. If there's some of you who have uh, done a lot of work on the tilt table software, but you don't have the hardware, uh, I, you know, if you think you've done enough work that it should qualify for the project, then you can talk to me about that and send me an email. But uh, I've sort of gotten to the point where I'm pretty convinced that it's, there's really no, not much you can do without the hardware. Um, so, uh, so anyway, um, for those of you working on the tail table, uh, you know, keep on working. I think uh, I'll, uh, I, the project due date, I think I'll make it the, uh, uh, I think we'll make it the, let's see. So if we look at the calendar, uh, I think the last day of class is like the 7th of, uh, May. So anyway, we'll make that, we'll, we'll make the, the projects due on the 7th of May. So, uh, and what I'll have you do is I'll create a link on Blackboard and you can take a video of your project working and, and uh, uh, upload the video, try and, try and keep the video really short. Uh, and then also uh, you can uh, upload your code. Uh, and what you can do for the code is all I want to see is the main, the main file. Um, so just all, all I need to see is the main file. Um, so try and keep most of your code, you know, most of the code you actually write in the main file. All right, so here's how this is going to work. And I'll create those links on Blackboard. One for the code and one for the uh, video. Uh, and you don't have to turn them in for the seven. So basically you have two full weeks if you haven't, well, you won't have started on this. So this, this is going to be uh, a lot of the, stuff's there and if you knew what you were doing it would probably take you all of a matter of a couple of hours uh, if you don't know what you're doing you're gonna have to spend some time figuring this out and like I say uh, I'll wait a few uh, days and then I'll I'll put some more code on github that includes some additional functionality so here's here's what I have so far let me just run it so you can see so the first thing you have to do is uh, is go ahead and open up a terminal window so what you do is you go into uh, Device Manager on your laptop, and you can do that by right-clicking on Windows, clicking on Device Manager. If, if you don't see your port, then click on View up here and Show Hidden Devices, and it should come up. And then you expand that, and you'll see an Open SDA, blah, 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 uh, PEM Micro, blah, 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 COM3. So mine's on COM3. So I put COM3. And the baud rate is 115200, 115200. And so then I open that up. And then I get I get this window down there. Okay, something like that. And I'm going to slide it over here so that uh, we can see that okay. All right, now, um, the first thing you should do uh, is, actually, I get, the first thing you should do is uh, boot up your, uh, MC Lab Expresso, and when you boot it up, go ahead and create a new uh, uh, working directory. Once you 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 can do that in uh, uh, you can do that in your file manager. Uh, so so here's the here's the file manager. Your your MCU Expresso is probably in um, is probably in uh, your documents. So if we click on documents and then we go, we look at all the directories. I see I have MCU workspace one, MCU workspace two, MCU workspace three. And if you need to create another one, just, you know, just go up there and click new folder and type in um, MCU, W-O-R-K-S-P-A-C-E four for me, okay. 
and so here it is and then when we click on this it should show up right there now once you get that directory made then uh, then what you can do is uh, it within MCU Expresso you click on file and you go click on file go down and it says switch workspace and then you just click on uh, you may not see it you can type it in under other uh, and I could just type it in here MCU workspace 4 and then launch it and what it does it reboots your MCU Expresso with this as the workspace but I've, I'm already where I want to be so I'm not going to do that and then what you do is you uh, import projects from file system you click this and then you then you go you put in it's it's a zip so when you download it from github well let me show you that first so let me let me come back to this let me bring up uh, github so you go down go out to github and uh, you have to go to docmo 99 micro 2 you go to there and you'll see you have alt project zip so you click on this and then you click download and then it's going to save the file uh, uh, and it'll probably save it to your download directory okay since I've already got it I think I have it in my download directory then I'm gonna not do this uh, but if I bring this back up and look we go to downloads uh, Downloads. Uh, no downloads. Yeah, downloads. And well, I guess I didn't put it in this directory. Okay, so I'll go ahead and download it from GitHub. So I'll go back on that GitHub and download it. Save file. And then, um, then I'll uh, go out of this and back in. Okay, now there it is. Okay. So now, uh, so now it's there, okay? Now, uh, so here I'm gonna, I'm gonna browse. I'm gonna go to my downloads and I'm gonna click on this project. Now in my case, it's not gonna, it's not gonna let me import it because I already have this in this directory. Okay, so when I click next, you see how it's grayed out and I can't check the checkbox. If that's the case, it means it's already existing. Now, the problem will be if you've imported uh, freedom KL25Z underscore driver underscore examples underscore GPIO underscore LED underscore output, then it won't allow you to input it because you already have that name. I tried to change the names. I didn't get that done correctly. It's a little tricky. That's one thing I really hate about MCU Expresso. But, so this won't let me do it. But if you have a brand new directory with nothing in it, it will absolutely let you import it. So it will not be grayed out. And then you just check the checkbox and click finish and you're done. But since I can't click it, I can't do that. So here it is, mine's here. And that's what it looks like when it pops in. Uh, it may not even be open and that's fine. Uh, so then you, then you, uh, I'll close it. So close project, uh, actually, uh, close project. Okay, so now it's closed. Now I do open project. Opens it up. Then you look, go down. You go down to uh, source. You click on GPIO LED output C. And this is the file you need to work with right here. So now let me show you. So you don't have to. So leave all this alone. But what, what you should do is go down here to main. It's not very big. This is the whole thing. Just that. It's really just, this is the, this is the whole main right there. This is a little delay function, so you can call and get delays, which uh, you need in order to see the LED blink. Now, this is just going to be, so when you run this, so um, let me shrink this back down for a second. So I'm just going to run it, and I'll show you what happens, the way it's currently set up. So I'm, 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 first I'm going to assemble it. So uh, I'm going to click on that. And let me make this big because half the stuff's not showing up. Well, now I don't see it at all. Uh, I don't know. Okay. 
So when you can't, when you don't see the windows you need, I just go to perspective, I reset perspective. And hopefully it'll fix everything, and it didn't. Well, uh, all right, so we're on. Okay, so, well, you can go down here and debug it down here. So that's what I'll do. So I'll hit debug, and it should come up. It should let make you uh, select uh, the OpenSDA. Uh, so click on OpenSDA. All right, so here it is. Now it's ready to run. I still don't have, I, I don't know why I don't have my little, uh, it doesn't, uh, for some reason I lost my little icons here, golly. Show two bar. Okay, oh, there we go, good, okay. All right, so now I'm ready to run, so uh, I'm going to shrink this back down, hopefully, and still have this. Okay, so now, now I have my putty windows open, and I'm going to run it. And when I run it, it's going to say GPIO driver example, LED is taking turns to shine. But I added this function where if you click in this window and you type in a 1, a 2, or a 3, well, I shouldn't have typed in so many. So I entered a 1. Uh, okay, so now I have a 1, and you can you can detect that 1, and um, and if you enter one, then I'll I'll have you blink, say the red LED. If if it's two, you blink the blue LED, and if it's three, you blink the green LED. And if you four, uh, I'll have you do four, five, and six. We'll do combinations of them, okay? And maybe seven, uh, all all three. I think something like that. Okay, so that's that's already built into the code for you. Okay, so let's look at the code. So. Uh, and and if you look at the board right now, right now it's uh, oh crap you can't see anything sorry. If you look at the board, you can see it's it's blinking the uh, the red LED. Okay. So what you want it to do is you want it to blink the uh, the others. That's the part you have to implement. Now, uh, so let's we'll we'll turn this off for now. We'll stop it. Remember, always make sure, always terminate your debug session before you hit the blue bug. If you don't, you can get an extra debug session, and you'll see down here uh, there'll be a little thing when it compiles. Like if I if I compile it now, uh, there'll be a little thing right down here. You'll see a you'll see a red X on this little stack of green things right there. And if you see that, it means you've got uh, uh, extra, extra debug, debug sessions, sessions that haven't been closed and it screws everything up. If that's the case, close everything out and reboot the uh, application and you'll fix that. But you won't have that problem if you always close your application, your running application before you try and debug it again or recompile it. Okay, so let's now take a look at this. I'm going to blow this up. Okay, so hopefully you can see this all right. Um, now, uh, so this is all there is to it. There's not that much. So, so it prints out these two lines, and you can change the printout if you want. And then it does this. It, it has a variable defined as option character here, right here, option value. And then uh, it's going to it's going to go out to get character, subtract 30 hex from it, so it takes the ASCII and turns it into a single digit integer. That's why you can only type in a single digit. So that gives you choices from, uh, well from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So that's 10 choices. That should be plenty. And, uh, and then it prints out the number you entered. Now, currently it's set up to do this. It has, it set up this, uh, it set up this structure right here. Okay. And, and it's, it's setting this pin as a digital output. And uh, it's, the pin's name is called uh, LED config. All right. Well, that's no, that's the function. Uh, yeah, here, yeah, here is what it is. The pin's called uh, uh, board LED GPIO pin, I think. Well, anyway, to figure out how this works, what you have to do, you have to go into the uh, the pins uh, 
function here. So let me let me do that. I'll switch back to the standard view. And if I click over here, I don't see a pins function. So you go into config tools. I, I don't know why it, it doesn't look right. And I've lost my icons up here. Let me see if I can get those back. Uh, let's see. Uh, where did I get it? Uh, crap. Uh, perspective. No. Here. Toolbar. I don't know why it keeps hiding there. Okay. If you go, well, it doesn't even list, it doesn't even list all those things. Okay. So if it doesn't, it should list over here. I, I don't know why my, my MCU Espresso is not appearing like it always does for me. But if you go into here under configuration tools and click, you get these choices, pins, clocks, peripherals, uh, this T, I forget what it is, and device configuration. Okay, you are allowed to mess with pins and clocks. You are not, the peripherals hasn't been implemented. So what you do is you click on pins and it should come up and look like this. Like this. So you, you see your package over here, all 80 pins are listed out. You see all the pins here, listed out all 80, zero, uh, pin 1 to 80. And then uh, you see down here uh, that we've defined GPIOB, well we've defined the UART, uh, and GPIOB is PT18, which happens to be the red LED. It, if To figure out what, what the other colors are, uh, we do have that, we do have that covered on Blackboard. So we can go into Blackboard here. Uh, I should have this up here. Oh crap, man. Too quick on my clicking there. I guess that's a new look. And then you have to go down to content. And then if you go down to um, labs, and then you go up here, uh, free and board schematic, and I think it also tells you on here the colors. Well, it does, but it's not it's not the best. Anyway, so so if you go down here and you and you find the LEDs, they're right here, and we basically have to blow this up so we can see what we're looking at. Okay, so PTB18 is the red, PTB19 is the green, and the blue, it, 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 here it doesn't actually show you it, because this actually comes out as pin 13, and you have to go to a different page to see it, uh, but it's D1 is what it is, but I'll show you where you find it. Um, so page 3 and 5, and I forget what page we're on here now. This is ridiculous. Uh, let's see, I think it goes, no, um, no, it's down this way. It's down here, uh, I think. Uh, nope, that's not it. Yeah, so it's back up here. It's here. If you look right here, you'll find this connects, um, Let's see. Well, let me go back here and make sure. So it, it connects to D13 here, okay? That isn't the PIN number. Uh, it's the connection number. So if we go to D13, and I, I don't think it's here. Oh, it is. Okay. So if you, yeah. So if you look at this right here, uh, and then where's my blow up thing? Okay, go. Well, I think you can, can I do it with this? No. Oh, I see, we have to go up here. No, we have to go up here. Yeah. 
Okay, now if we go down here and look at this. So here's our original, and we look, now we have to find D13. So D13 is right here, and you can see it right there. And if you look at that, what it does, it sh shows you PTD1, ADC0, um, single-ended uh, 5B, uh, the SPI, the SPIO, or SPI0 uh, clock, and touch sensor channel 11, or channel 1, something like that. You're interested in PTD, PTD1. So the three pins you have to worry about are PTB18, PTB19, and PTD1. And uh, PTD1 is the blue, PTB19 is the green, and the red, which is already set up, is PTB18. Okay, armed with that. Now you can go down here, and, and you can you you can first click uh, PTB GPIOB. So you click on that, and you can see that we already have. Uh, I don't know why it didn't didn't give you. Yeah, here it goes. So now we also click on 19, and then we'll route those. So that makes it show up down here. And notice it says LED red, LED green. And so those are important. And then finally we'll click on D. Uh, where's D? D. And we'll click on D1. Uh, and we'll route that. And now we have D1. And it actually already populates. And then you, you, have, you should go ahead and set the... Uh, set it as output, set it as output. I think they're actually already, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't change 18. And the initial state can be logic zero. You probably should make it logic one. Well, I don't know. You can make it logic zero, uh, whatever. I, I don't know. You probably should make it logic one, actually. Because I, I think logic zero I think logic zero actually turns the light on and logic one turns it off. Okay, and once you do that, uh, it changes this up here too. If you want to scroll, you can see it. Here's 18 and 19, and here's D1. And the other things that are set up, power, ground, and your UART. Okay, all right, so now all you have to do is go up here, and there's a window that says, that says um, oh man okay I lost my stupid thing again okay appearance toolbar so update code right here you just click this and you update the code like that, boom. So it shows you what's going to change. You hit OK. Now you now you go ahead and you've created, you've set up all three of the pins you need. Now I'm not going to tell you the rest of it. I want you to work on that and figure it out. What I will tell you is you have to set up a structure, and uh, and the structure uh, will. Uh, Yeah, let's see. So board, LED, red, GPIO. Yeah, and let me just look at it real quick because I... Yeah, so they... What they did, they changed... They you What you're going to have to put in is board, underscore, LED, underscore, green, underscore, blue, underscore, GPIO, or whatever. And they, they put this as board LED GPIO. So uh, so you'll have to you, you'll have to create this structure. And here's the structure. They they've created it for you uh, right here. Define an init structure for the output LED. So you you actually have to create this structure and uh, and here it sets it as a digital output. We we already set it as a digital output in the in the in the uh, and, and when if we look under a nip hinge, you'll see that's already set up. So then, what you need to what you need to toggle it, uh, you need 
So this inits it, and then this toggles it. And um, so, so it says GPIO toggle pins output board LED. So, so it takes a little bit of figuring out to get this to work, but uh, notice that they're all they're doing is toggling it. So you should be able to change this uh, to get the other colors. And rather than showing you how to do that, I'm going to let you work on that. But I'll give you some hints later in the week. Uh, if you figure it out before then, then you get 100 percent. If you don't, then I might take off uh, five points. And then if I give you more help, I might take off another five points. So we'll see how you do, but hopefully uh, hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll kind of do the pick and shovel work to sort this out. Um, and it's a little confusing, but I would encourage you to, uh, to go ahead and look at the, where you can see this. Uh, if you go under board and you go under... Uh, I think it's actually drivers here. GPIO. Look at GPIO C and GPIO H. And if you go through those files, uh, these will, you know, the uh, the GPIO C will show you uh, how these initial how these initials uh, toggles and how this works. Just so you know, the grayed out portions are not applicable to your chip. They're for a more advanced chip. So if, don't, don't ignore the grayed out portions. Don't look at them. Don't delete them, but don't look at them. So the only part you have to look at is the non grayed out. Here's the function GPIO clear pins, interrupt flag. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, get pins, interrupt flags. You don't have to worry about that. GPIO pin init. You do have to do that. You will have to init the other, the other two pins before you use them. And uh, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll have to make sure that you. The, if you look at the header, you'll see they have all these enumerations. Okay, so, so here's the first enumeration: pin direction, digital K GPIO underscore digital input. It's just zero. K GPIO digital output. It's just a one. Um, but they make it kind of fancy to, so it can work very generically. And then we go down here. Uh, you'll see some other words. Now here's our structure, pin direction, and our output logic. Uh, and this is the the structure underscore GPIO pin config, and so that's and and it's referred to by GPIO underscore pin underscore config. So that's how you change the output, and and this and then you have a couple other things here, uh, and you, you should read through this whole file and 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 try and get to the point where you really do understand it. Okay, here's the, the pin inits. So this gets the pin knitted. And, uh, and then this, this, uh, this is how you can change the output. Um, this is pin clear output register. And this is pin set output register. And then I think they have a pin toggle output register as well. Yes, here it is. Here's uh, GPIO underscore toggle pins output. And it's the same kind of thing. You have to put in the uh, GPIO type uh, and the uh, and the uh, and the mask, uh, and then this this runs this pin toggle output register instruction for you. So that's what's already uh, implemented here. That's what's implemented right here. This is calling that function. So the uh, the GPIO will be the same for pin 19, but it'll be a little different for uh, uh, port D. Anyway, I'm going to let you work on that, and I'll probably put something out uh, by Wednesday or Thursday at the latest, probably, to give you a little more help. And I'll put a new module out on, uh, on, on uh, GitHub. So I'd like to see if you can sort your way through this. This will be a really good exercise. It'll take a little time to try and understand the header file for GPIO and the uh, uh, and the C file for GPIO. All right, I think with that I'm going to stop. Um, and um, so, well, well, so what I want you to do, 
I want you to be able to at least do uh, when when the uh, when when the, when you get this prompt. Well, I'll probably I'll probably you should probably change the prompt. I mean, it's printing. This is what it's printing out now. It's printing out you know GPIO driver example blah blah blah. You should, we should probably change this to say you know enter. Enter one e uh, equals red, two equals uh, uh, green, and three equals what did I do? And two equals green, uh, three equals B L U E. All right, so so those are. Those are probably the ones we should do. I'll say that. So you really want that. And then you can type in one, two, or three. And the, your one, two, or three is going to wind up an option value. And then you can just create a switch statement that changes your uh, function in your while loop to, uh, to display the different colors. OK? All right. So there you go. <laughs> So that's that's uh, that's that's the official alternative project. Unless you have something else uh, that's working and you want to run it by me. All right, done.